Welcome to the Hot Slice. I am Creative Director Josh Cowan, along with Executive Editor of Pizza Today, Denise Greer. Hello, Denise. Hello, Josh. You know, you know, we are already in uh, December, and actually, I can't. I want to do like a whole montage of our intros. I bet they're the same from episode <laughs> one to episode whatever two hundred. Well. I bet they're exactly the same. So you know, it's called having a signature, Josh. Right, right. And right, all exactly. the big ones do. They have right. a signature. So we're just gonna be pro just... and have a signature too. Right, right. Sorry to interrupt you, but what what were you going? <laughs> That's <to>? okay. <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with this. Look, it's December. Mm -hmm. 2022 is almost out of here. 2023 is coming up. Um, and we have sure seen a lot this year. Uh, it has been just a crazy up and down year uh, for a lot of folks. And we've definitely watched and and kind of, you know, help people out as much as we possibly can uh, to help guide their businesses. And but we're going into 2023 and optimistic but cautiously optimistic is what we found. That's what we found out in our, uh, in our industry survey. We found that a lot of people are, uh, that's my day to day. Cautiously (laughs) optimistic day to day. It'll never change. It'll always be cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. uh, uh, Actually uh, about the industry report. Um, it's, it's into December now, so you can go to pizza today.com. Yes. It's live. Pour all over, take a deep, deep dive into the pizzeria, state of the pizzeria industry report. Uh, Denise, you've headed this up all the way. So kind of give us a rundown of what they can expect. Man. Uh, well, okay. So we sent out a, a survey earlier this year, which we've talked about and talked about and talked about on this podcast. Oh. And um, so what we did was we poured over those results and um, and we really honed in on some of the findings. So Jeremy took some sections, I took some sections um, and we presented it into the magazine, but also we did an even deeper look at it on pizzatoday.com where, I mean, to look at this report is going to take you a while. Let me, let me just put it that way. I mean, just editing it took me several hours. So just reading it's going to take you a little while. Um, but what I love about the report is uh, you're going to get something from it. You're you're going to For find sure. something that resonates. I'm finding things that resonates. I mean, we, we're we looking at 2023 stories and I'm just like looking at this report like, oh, that's relevant. That's relevant. That's relevant. Yeah. This is relevant. Um, and so it's exciting. Uh, it was, I can't wait I think- for it. And the most exciting part is everyone we surveyed is in the pizza industry. Absolutely. It's like it, 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 it directs, it's, it's yep. so direct right to you. It's so, uh, that's, and the that's majority of them and the majority of them are independent operators mm-hmm. and a lot of them were single unit operators. Yep. Uh, so that's very important because that that's who we're representing. That's who a lot of people, when they read our magazines, that's who's reading it, is a lot of the independent f- folks. And so we want to make sure that we're addressing their concerns. They're looking at their trends. We're seeing what's happening with them because not necessarily what's happening with, you know, the big top pizza chains that may not be relevant to the small independent operator. Um, so we wanted to make sure we're representing who, who our folks are. Um, so Jeremy and I are going to dive into this. We're doing a couple of podcasts on the findings. Um, we're not sure how we're going to divvy that up just yet because there's so much meat to it, um, that we're just going to try to bring it down to digestible little chunks is <laughs> yes. what we're going to do. So uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, we also have another exciting thing, which I'm wrapping up right now so I can get it in your hands. Uh, but we've got our pizzerias to watch uh, feature coming out in January. So I'm excited yeah. for that because we have a lot of new names right. that I had not been exposed to. And I love that. I love getting just new energy and into, yeah. into into our and, uh, and that's what we're trying to do with the magazine all in general i mean like it, this is the first time we've done an industry report this is the first time we've done uh pizzerias to watch uh yeah. you know we're bringing you know we're, we're working hard to bring a new energy uh to the magazine uh and get you some new fresh content so uh, absolutely but, but yeah so and uh one other thing before we get to our guest today uh pizza expo mm-hmm. it's going to be 2023 here in a few days and Pizza oh. Expo is in March, so the uh, registration is open. Go to pizzaexpo.com, and you you can uh, you can get started on your registration because uh, you know it just keeps getting bigger and bigger every year. And yeah. 
you know, it's a little daunting on our side, seeing how big it's getting, <laughs> but, but it's great for the business. It's great for the industry. So, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I like that we're going that last week of March because you know, it might be a little bit warmer, which Maybe means a little, a little more, more <laughs> you know, that five minutes of sun we get walking to the convention center. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to that already. And it's <laughs> only December right now, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to the sunshine and warmth. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into our guest today. Denise, would you like to introduce? Yeah, so we're talking to John Bortles. He's from uh, Woody's Wood Fired Pizza there in Golden, Colorado. Uh, you know, it has been such a just a dynamite standout pizzeria. Uh, they do a buffet, which is something that our industry report will prove that like not not very many people are doing buffets. You know, there was a time when like everybody and their mom was getting into putting a buffet in their in their pizzeria. Mm -hmm. And now it's I think it represented maybe four a less than four percent. But, of uh operations but let me tell you buffet. they are making it work they are oh, making it work <laughs> they they're, they're doing a buffet like no one else is i this this isn't your uh you know your cheap buffet buffet line this is this is some wood-fired uh you know beautiful pizzas coming out so uh that that's the great thing about it uh but he has you know john's one of those guys that he is always thinking forward and he's mm -hmm. always planning. He's got a dynamite sustainability program. You know, he built out his own, you know, they built out a, um, a container uh, in the yep. back of their uh, yeah. business to do takeout and delivery. And mm -hmm. he added a delivery program. So he's had a lot going on that and he redid his kitchen. So yeah. he's just always going in a million directions, and, doing things. And we touch base on every bit of that. So, yeah. uh, so hopefully you get something out of this and uh, welcome to the show. With extraordinary pizza cheese comes extraordinary rewards. Only Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese offers the Gold Club Rewards Program with a monthly cash back on every cheese purchase. Members also receive funds twice a year to use in their exclusive marketing store. It's their way of saying grazie to customers. Schedule a demonstration at BaccioCheese.com slash hot slice and discover how rewarding Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese can be. Pizza is your legacy. Build it with Baccio. Looking to grow your pizzeria or restaurant? Then you'll want to try the power of a cloud-based POS system. With Hunger Rush, you'll get everything you need. This fully integrated restaurant management system allows you to easily streamline operations, accelerate the delivery process, and grow your business through Hunger Rush 360 marketing. And it's so easy to use. Want AI-powered text ordering? It's built in. Need to track orders? No problem. Schedule a personalized demo at HungerRush.com today. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high-quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group, with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. Uh, all right. Well, hey, John. Um, first, happy holidays. We're, we're welcome to the show. The, we're deep into the season. Welcome to the show. <laughs> um, Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, you have so many exciting things happening. That's why we wanted to talk to you. Um, so first off, let's talk because you pinged me on social media to talk about some sustainability stuff you had going because our November issue of Pizza yep. Today was dedicated to sustainability. There right? you yeah. are, on hand, and nice. On hand, I love <laughs> it. Um, so when we were, so you you pinged us about an award you won. So tell us, tell us all, I, I'm curious about this award you won. Sure, well, first and foremost, thanks for doing the sustainability issue. I was stoked to see that. Um, love that you're talking about it, love the articles in there. I think a lot of that stuff was just right on point. So kudos. Um, Okay, so yeah, we've been doing this stuff just for fun for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. I studied it in school, had a past, you know, past life profession. So it's kind of just a, you know, geek out kind of thing okay. uh, at the pizza place. And um, uh, we were honored this, this past year for the Colorado Restaurant Association's uh, Sustainability and Innovation Award, uh, which okay. was pretty cool. All right, so yeah, how, that, how did you win the award? What, what, what was behind that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think our, uh, our waste diversion program um, excites a lot of people. And specifically, uh, I think what helped catalyze the innovation side of that uh, was our new takeout and delivery kitchen. 
mm -hmm. that we built out of a an upcycled shipping container, solar power, so rooftop cool. garden, all the bells and whistles. Um, so it was a fun project to highlight. Um, but we we do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, well, is that first... is that attached? Oh, so go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna hit on the waste disposal and then hop okay, into. Okay, go for it. Go for <laughs> it. Yeah, like... let's, let's jump All on right. that first. So let's talk about the waste. Um, kind of how do you approach that, and is it sustainable and feasible for other operators to kind of take on that 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 mold? Yeah, I mean, listen, there's so many different business models, and you know, everything changes. Um, by region too. So uh, there is no like one size fits all uh, blueprint. Yeah. Um, but the reality is in this day and age, if you want to do it, you can do it. Um, yeah. You know, for, for us, you know, the, the biggest thing is, you know, understanding what waste you're generating. Um, mm -hmm. And for us, our, our claim to fame for the last 30 years is uh, all you can eat soup, salad, and pizza. So as you could imagine, the food waste mm -hmm. um, is just incredible. Oh um, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, people are like, "Oh, I'm gonna get uh, you know 20 slices of each different pie, and then you know try one bite of each, and the rest oh, goes wow. in the trash." Um, so you know, obviously, that was kind of the, the the elephant in the room. Like, okay, sustainability. What's you know what's our lever? And uh, it was food waste. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not as simple as saying, "Hey, you know, you know, uh, trash company, I want to do a composting program." Um, it's not that simple. There's a lot of planning that goes into it. Um, a lot of purchasing decisions that go into it, a lot of training yeah. that goes into it. So, um, but it can be done. And once it's rolling, it's not, it's not hard. It's business as usual. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Now, now, Josh, now let's get into that container. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask, is the container attached to uh, your, your current restaurant or is it, you know, a different location? How's that working? Sure. Um, so a little bit of both. Um, so we've got a, a hundred year old building. Uh, right downtown Golden. We're like a block from the Coors Brewery. Um, nice. So we've got this funky little spot that we've constantly added on to over the years, right? Like before this kitchen, it was just, uh, you know, a wood shed for a wood fired oven, a couple of storage sheds and like a table for, uh, you know, the smokers, uh, you know, the staff. Um, so when we designed it, it kind of started as, okay, can we get like a, a big food truck back there to help kind of offset, you know, our minute, you know, our, our small kitchen for, for takeout. And it just kept growing, kept growing. And ultimately we're like, all right, let's do something different. Let's do a, let's do a, you know, 50 foot shipping container. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's directly behind the restaurant. Um, there's kind of like an awning that connects the two. So um, most people, you know, call ahead, order online. Um, they can drive right up to it, um, park mm -hmm. right in front of it. And then we've got a kind of a, you know, a welcome window right there. Food's ready to go. Oh, that's awesome. You that's know, an excellent idea. I mean, yeah. like, you know, com coming out of the pandemic and everybody wanting to do more takeout and delivery, that's a great option. Uh, yeah, that's a wonderful option. You we know, got what, lucky too. What challenges did you have in using a shipping container? I'm always curious about like, <laughs> because A, I want to build a, a tiny house and yeah. I've thought about <laughs> a shipping container. So, uh, you know, so uh, what are some of the the things that you dealt with uh, with using a shipping container for your building purposes. Sure. Yeah, no, people are like, hey, you must have saved so much money by uh, getting a, a used shipping <laughs> container. No, <that's laughs> not at all. Um, the, you know, the biggest struggle, I think, with using a strip shipping container is that, you know, the building codes and the architects and mm -hmm. the contractors, this is all new to them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So trying to figure out, you know, the engineering, you know, can you support a hood on the roof of a you know shipping container, well that that takes some thought. It's not something that's just in a book. So um, mm -hmm. kind of the professional services side of it, all the all the people helping us design it um, was substantially more expensive. Just making sure we did it safe, we did it right, and made yeah. sure the the city would sign off on it. Yeah. Now, is it harder to insulate and just make sure that you have temperature controls? Because you know you you do have a pizza oven out there, right? So is the, is the temperature controls a little different in a metal building? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was a big concern. Um, so we did insulate everything, spray foamed, um, and then, you know, drywalled and then put stainless on all the walls. And then we've got, um, you know, the hoods temperature controlled. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a, a split unit um, that provides cooling and heating depending on the time of year. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we were concerned, you know, is this thing just going to heat up in the summer and roast our staff? Uh, <laughs> right. But it actually... Uh, Knock on wood, it's it's gone really well. That's awesome. So so looking back on you know what are some things you might do differently this time around if you had to re redo it again. So 
we we did this right before the pandemic, right? This was oh, like okay. end of 2019. Mm -hmm. oh, I thought so, it was like a response to it. So that's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, well, that's what I was saying. We got lucky. Um, yeah. We you know basically had just rolled this out in the systems right when COVID hit. So mm -hmm. um, we were very lucky to have a lot of that up up and running in time. You know, we went from five percent takeout business to a hundred percent almost overnight. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if I did it over again you know, kind of along those lines, this has been way busier than I would have expected. Um, mm -hmm. So I probably would have put in a bigger oven, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, a little bit more space to do what we're doing because on a, a busy Friday night, I mean, we are, we are maxed out. Crushing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, I think about, you know, you, you, so you've had it since 2019. So right now we're sitting, coming into 2023. I have no yeah. idea where the last three I think years I blacked out for the last three years. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? too. <laughs> and so uh, I, I think about that and I'm like, so what has that adding that special takeout and delivery spot using the shipping container, what has that done for your business? You know, what, what has that happened now that now that COVID settled in and you, you know, you're back to normal business, <laughs> you know, uh, what does that look like for you now? And how has, how has that container helped your business? So it's been tremendous for us, uh, obviously during the pandemic, it kind of speaks for itself, but, but now, like you said, that things are kind of leveling out. Um, we've still added probably 20% to the, to the top line. Wow. Um, yeah. Great. Just from takeout and delivery. And another thing we did, um, you know, right away, we're like, okay, we've never done delivery either. Right. So like a lot of people jumped on the third party bandwagon and, you know, sold a bunch of food through third party. And, mm -hmm. and this year we said no more of that. If we're going to do delivery, we're doing it ourselves. Okay. And, um, that's added, you know, just a little bit more to it as well. Oh, so let's go into that because I, yeah. <laughs> you know, do it yourself delivery. I mean, it, it's a huge process and it's a huge undertaking. It's a huge financial commitment. Um, you know, what has that process been like for you um, to take on the delivery in house and kind of what have you learned in the, in the process? Yeah, um, definitely a learning curve. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, talk about, uh, you know, if we could have done it over again, all the things we would have done differently. But, you know, we, <laughs> what we did well was, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't try to be greedy. You know, we kept mm -hmm. our, um, you know, our, our delivery radius small. Um, we tried to be honest with people up front. Hey, we're new at this, you know, be patient with us. Um, but it's, you know, slowly grown to where it, now it's almost like, uh, you know, I don't remember not doing it. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the biggest thing for us for, for takeout and delivery was having the right point of sale system. Um, you know, to have the flexibility that, you know, tracks drivers, assigns drivers, online ordering, you know, adjustable wait times, all that stuff, um, we wouldn't have been able to do, you know, before yeah. we, you know, launched all this. So that, that's been huge for sure. Yeah. Did you have to uh, upgrade or change your POS uh, to, to add delivery or was your, uh, was your company able to handle it for you? Um, so it was part of our kind of our strategy for switching back in 2019 because mm -hmm. we knew this was coming. So we, we found a solution um, that would allow us to do our you know, lion's share of dine in, but also add the takeout and then eventually add the, nice. the delivery. And luckily in those you know, three years, their um, software has improved for the delivery yeah. side of the business. Um, so we haven't had to add you know, one off in integrations yeah. or anything like that. Oh, that's awesome. Now, how yeah. much, how much of your business is delivery now, now that you've got it in? You know, I'd say if we said, you know, take out deliveries 20%, I'd say delivery is probably like a quarter of that. So it's still pretty small. <laughs> yeah. um, we're growing. We only have, we, we pretty much have um, like two or three drivers per night. You know, we're only doing like maybe a, um, like a 15 minute radius right now. Okay. Uh -huh. um, again, in the, in the future, we're, we're going to expand that um, even further. Yeah. What are some of the right. biggest challenges you found with having your own delivery in-house? You know, I think it's, um, it's training, you know, how do you train somebody yeah. when you've never done it? <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> you know, it's like, all right, here's what I think is going to happen. And yeah. you know, let me know how it goes. Um, so just training in it, but it's been nice, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we, we can hire, you know, and, and post jobs for people that have the experience and ultimately they can train us. Um, yeah. So it goes both ways. That's awesome. Um, you know, I was thinking, cause, okay, we did this big industry report and I know, okay, you, you still have a thriving buffet program, correct? 
We do, yeah. Yeah, because uh, the one thing we found in our uh, in our research is hardly anybody's doing buffets, you know. And that was even, I think, I think that was probably something happening before the pandemic, you know. So, how has your buffet program program still thrived and even expanded? Because you've you've been able to expand your business and grow um, with a with a buffet program, you know. How you've been able to do that with buffet? Yeah, it's it's so funny the connotation that buffet has to most people, right? They think of the the cheap buffets. And how like yeah. yeah, I think, yeah. Of, the, I I think of the Vegas buffets that are like yeah. 50 million options. With chocolate <laughs> sure, fountains. Sure. And, uh... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, I think it's it's pretty rare though, and I'm not sure I, I can think of one, honestly, that I've, I've found where you have like craft, you know, house-made ingredients in a wood-fired oven buffet right like yeah we will take requests like whatever pizza you want on our menu or not on our menu tell the mm -hmm. cooks they'll make it as part of that buffet so there's there's a value proposition there that's like why wouldn't you like yeah. one set price try all the different pizzas and i mean yeah it's a no-brainer and then operationally um it's a lot easier because we mm -hmm. just stock the buffet and that keeps the oven you know, moving versus having yeah. a thousand people a day ordering, you know, individual pies. It, it's, we wouldn't be able to do it that way. Gotcha. So is it more of a, is it all day or is it just lunch or? All day, every day. Yeah. We, day. we tried day, the, day. the day part thing over the years and it just never made any sense. Um, this mm -hmm. is what we do and uh, it's 11 AM to 11 PM every wow. day. Wow. That yep. is awesome. You know, we're I, doing thousand people a day. Wow. wow, that is insane. <laughs> I mean, and you have a huge spot too. What's your square footage in there? It's uh, not that think? big. Um, really? I, I, for no. some odd reason, I From thought the exterior, it was big. It looks big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the it exterior looks really looks big. <laughs> no, um, you know, I think our square footage is like 4,000 total. So dining room, you know, so our capacity in the dining room is like 140 people. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, okay. that's big. By, definitely by pizzeria standards, where the average sure, is Okay, about, sure, sure. The average is about 50 seats in a pizzeria. So I, it yeah, feels small. Good. I yeah. never have enough room. You're like, you're just going to blow out the back and just, you know, Someday. make it have. for 250, yeah. right? Um, right? You know, I A, we, we have an editor-in-chief that is a self-described gerbophobe. So the one they all ask is, you know, and especially with the, with the COVID and with now we've got like four flus going around, you know, uh, when you talk about like cleanliness and being able to maintain kind of those standards, um, safety in, in a buffet, you know, how are you able to do that, uh, in, in your operation? Sure. I mean, uh, first and foremost, we take, you know, health safety, uh, food safety, um, so, so seriously, yeah. you know, all our, all our managers are certified as, you know, you know, managers on serve safe, uh, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So they know what they're doing, first of all, and you can see what they're doing. Everyone's gloved, everyone's following the procedures. Um, during the pandemic, obviously there was a lot of concern about this and we were even shut down um, by the health department, you know, mm -hmm. to not allow a buffet for like 15 months. So we tried all sorts of things where we were, you know, um, bringing slices to the table and, you know, trying to yeah. find a way to do it where it wasn't kind of this communal thing. Um, but at the end of the day, we don't find that to be an issue at all. People don't have a concern. Um, yeah. We do put out, um, we do put out sanitizer. We have it on every single table. We have mm -hmm. it up in the buffet. We have the, you know, a new sneeze guard kind of thing put in, but yeah. I, I tell you, I just don't hear it. I mean, maybe those people aren't coming, but um, <laughs> yeah. it's just not a concern, but two, you know, if that does bother you come to Woody's and we still offer table service. We still have a full menu of, right. you know, burgers and salads and sandwich. Yeah. I mean, we can cater to those people, but um, the lion's share of folks just don't seem to care. Oh, that's How is awesome. your burger program going? Yeah. <laughs> burgers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, also, it's a hot topic with burgers at pizzerias. So, yeah. It's a very debated wanna... topic in, yeah. in pizzerias. It's hilarious. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we sell a ton of burgers. They're really good. Um, in fact, we're, you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, I know it's a pizza place, but I come for the burgers. Um, yeah. Nice. We, and we just did a, a kitchen remodel back in February too. So um, put in all new equipment, char broilers. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's, un, it's unbelievable how many burgers we sell. I, I wish you guys could come out and see. I mean, wings, burgers, and pizza, it's just flying, man. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, you just said yeah. you did a kitchen remodel. So what, what was that? And, uh, and why, why did you feel the need to, to get in there and tear up your kitchen? <laughs> uh, you know, it, there's, 
we pretty much every February we we close for some sort of like cleaning and repairs, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we're, we've been around for 30 years. A lot of that equipment, you know, probably not original, but been there for a while. Yeah. And um, especially as we try to attract and retain talent and what a, you know, difficult talent pool rate, you know, there is right now. Um, yeah. We wanted to make sure that we put our best foot forward and, you know, make sure it was safe and clean and um, bright and, you know, all those things. So uh, we just, we pretty much kept the footprint the same, but, you know, all new Energy Star appliances, mm -hmm. um, you know, new flooring, new lights, new, all, all the stuff just to make sure it was ready for the next 30 years. Did you see crazy. energy savings? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, we, we did a project, not that project, but uh, a few years prior and did a complete LED um, retrofit of the whole place. Mm -hmm. And um, wow. we save about five grand a year, but, you know, 30 30 tons of CO2 per year. And it's just a no brainer. The payback's wow. like, you know, two years. I feel That's crazy amazing. old right now because you said, you know, I know you guys opened in 93, you said 30 years. I was like, what? Wait, oh. that's not right. Oh, oh, wow, man, that's been 30 years. <laughs> not allowed to do the math, Josh. Don't do the math. Don't do the math. It's it, we're at that age now that we can't do math anymore. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, what's relevant? Um, I I found out the little digital cameras that we all used to carry, like in the early 2000s, those are considered vintage. Oh, I'm sure. I'm vintage sure. Digital cameras. <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, we've, we've kept you long enough. I'll close out on this question. Okay. We're going into 2023. Um, what are you excited about for 2023? I'm excited to uh, do more off-premise stuff. We're going to design and build a, a giant trailer, a 24 foot pizza trailer oh, wow. and try to get back in the community a little more, um, okay. try to get out of our four walls and have some fun with, uh, with our neighbors. Oh, that'll be fun. Well, keep us posted yeah. on that because we can't wait to hear yeah. about it. Yeah, All right. Sure. Well, uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. And uh, like always, we enjoy talking to you and keep us posted on your progress. Sounds good. All Best right. of luck. All right. Take care.